الحمد لله <تصفيق> الحمد لله كفى والصلاة والسلام على من تبع على من تبع الهدى وعلى آله وأصحابه نجوم الهدى قادة التقى أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل إن كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوني يحببكم الله ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم والله غفور رحيم وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من تمسك بسنتي عند فساد أمتي فله أجر مئة شهيد رواه البيهقي صدق صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الأمي الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين. Dear respected elders, beloved brothers, today I'd like to speak to you about the prophet which was sent towards us for this ummah. The Prophet due to which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described this ummah as Kuntum Khaira Ummah that you are the you are the best, you are the most blessed ummah. This same ummah, every single Prophet made dua to be in this ummah. This is a fazilat of this ummah on the day of Qiyamah. When everybody will be in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Hisab Kitab will be completed. Jannat. Nobody will have the permission to enter Jannat before Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and before the Ummat of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It will be Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then his Ummat, then the Anbiya will enter Jannat al Firdaus. And today, the state of the Ummat is. We have forgotten who we are. We have lost our identity as Muslims. You can say we are ashamed to be seen as Muslims. If we scrutinize, look deep into the love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had for us, and then take a deep look inside ourselves, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had so much love for me, and what have I done to pay back this love to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you'll be alarmed. An example of which a story comes to mind of Hazrat Abu Bakr and Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala an were around Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says to them Alas, I may meet my brothers I wish to meet my brothers Hazrat Abu Bakr and Hazrat Umar look at him quite surprised Abu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam We are your brothers We done hijjit with you We have given you support Aren't we, Are we not your brothers? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam repeated his, repeated his saying again. He says, I wish to meet my brothers. And they say again, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we gave you support. We, we supported you during your hijrat. Are we not your brothers? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, you are my companions. My brothers are those who in akhirul zaman, in the time before qiyamah, the brothers, my brothers are those who have not seen me. They will not see me, they will not see my miracles, they will not have my companionship, and yet they will believe in me. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is trying to say he has the hope of meeting people like me and you. He has hope of meeting people like me and you. And what, what have we done? What have we done to be so fortunate to have this khush khabri, to have these glad times from Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he wants to meet us? Another story comes to mind. If you compare the love of a mother and you compare, you multiply it tenfold, twentyfold, you may find the love of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You may have to go even further than that. The story of a young man and his lover comes to mind. When his lover tells the young man, prove to me you love me, bring me your mother's heart. <coughs> now the young man in the elation of love, they say love makes you blind. He goes to his mother to follow the wish of his lover. He kills his mother and he's walking with his mother's heart, bringing it to his lover. He falls over with his mother's heart in his hand and a cry comes out from the heart, my son, are you okay? 
My son, how are you? No harm has reached you. Imagine this is the love that a mother has for her son. She has no body, all she has is a heart. The love a mother has for her son. Multiply this tenfold, twentyfold, thirtyfold. We may find the love Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will have for us. And you can multiply it by infinity, you will never find the love Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has for us. Our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the love he had for us. There's nothing we can do to pay back this love. We can follow the steps of our pious predecessors, the Salaf al Salihin. People like Hazrat Imam Abu Hanifa, Rahmatullah Alayhi, Hazrat Imam Shafi, Rahmatullah Alayhi, Hazrat Imam Shafi, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Hazrat Imam Shafi, because of one khas, one specific durood, he used to pray upon me. His intercession will be done on the day of Qiyamah, khas. His specific intercession will be done on the day of Qiyamah. He came in a dream and he said this. And the person asked, you know, what did he recite? What did he recite that was so blessed in the eyes of you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that his intercession is guaranteed on the day of Qiyamah? And his durood, he mentions, he mentions his durood. And then we go through other stories of our Salaf al Salihin, the love they had for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hazrat Imam Malik rahmatullahi alayhi, he was teaching hadith to his pupils. Teaching hadith to a full class, hundreds and hundreds of pupils. Not now did he have 10, 20 people, he had hundreds of pupils in his gathering. And he sees a scorpion, he doesn't do anything. The scorpion comes to him, the scorpion bites him not once, not twice, not three times. The scorpion bites him 16 times. And as Imam Malik, rahmatullahi alayhi, he doesn't change, he doesn't make one movement here, not one movement there, he doesn't make, he doesn't cry out. Only the complexion on his face changes. He doesn't cry out. Then after the dhar's finished, the students come to him. Imam Sahib, the, the, the look on your face changed. Did anything happen? And he mentions to them, this scorpion bit me 16 times. Now imagine if a scorpion, if we even see a scorpion, not in the same way we see in the, houses, uh, in the same house as us. We leave the house. This Imam Malik, rahmatullah alayhi, sat with him. It's... It stung him 14, it's 16 times, it stung him 16 times. And Hazrat Imam Malik Rahmatullahi Ali didn't make one movement. When the student asked him that, why don't you make any movement, we could have helped you, why don't you cry out? Why don't you say something? He says, because of my respect, because of my love for the words of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I thought it out of order for me to make a claim, for me to cry out of my own pain and leave the, and leave the hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we go through more stories. That Hazrat Imam Hazrat Mala Qasim Nanufi Sabr Rahmatullahi Alayhi Hujjatullah Hujjatul Islam His Laqab That when he used to enter Medina Munawwara He would remove his slippers. Because of him removing his slippers He'd be walking barefooted. He'd have blisters on his feet. He'd be bleeding from his feet. And the people would say to him Hazrat, why are you doing this? Why are you causing yourself pain? There's no zurud for you to do this. You can keep on your slippers. And his reply, listen to his reply. Hazrat Mawla Qasim Nanotri Yusab Rahmatullahi Alayhi replies that how can my feet, how can I wear slippers and trample on the sand over which Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam walked? Over the sand, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam walked. And you look at us today, brothers, I'm included in this. We have lost our identity as Muslims. We have given up the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for the people of this dunya, for the people who aren't worth the sun under the feet of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ That for you, in the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you have the perfect example, the perfect pattern, the perfect way of life. Now if I, were you tell, if I were to tell you that I know a way of getting you whatever you want. If you follow my commands, I will give you anything you want. Let's say one million pounds, I will give you one million pounds. All you have to do is follow these steps and I will give you one million pounds. We'd be ready, we'd be at the feet of the person saying, tell me, tell me, tell me, what can I do to get this? We'd go through hardships, we'd go night upon night without sleeping. We'd work through the night. 
we leave home just to get this one million pounds. And this one million pounds in the dunya is worth nothing. Because Allah has promised us in the akhirat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, إِنَّ اللَّهَ اشْتَرَى مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَنفُسَهُمْ وَأَمْوَالَهُمْ بِأَنَّ لَهُمُ الْجَنَّةِ The Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bought from the Muslims their jans وَأَمْوَالُهُمْ and their money in lieu of Jannah to Firdaus, in lieu of Jannah. Now he's given us an example. Allah has told us what we need to do to get the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet we refuse to follow these steps. If we only follow the steps of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, our goal in life isn't to get Jannah. Our goal in life isn't to stay away from the hellfire. Our goal in life is to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hazrat Rabia Abi Siriya rahmatullahi alayha, a very pious woman of the past, one day she walked out with some fire in one hand on a stick and a bucket of water in another hand. The people are asking her, Rabia, have you lost it? Why are you walking around with water and fire? She said, I've seen what you lot are doing now. You lot are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You lot are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get jannah. You are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to stay away from the hellfire. With this fire, I'm going to destroy the nemats of Jannah. With this water, I'm going, to dis- I'm, going to, I'm going to destroy the fire of Jahannam. So there's nothing for you to worship anymore. Then you will have to worship for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have been given a path, we have been given a guide to get to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet we have sacrificed this guide. We have sacrificed the sunnah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have taken it out of our lives and we have brought into the lives. We have brought into our lives the way of the kuffar. The way the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us to stay away from. We have brought their pattern of life, their examples, their way of life into our life. Has Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam not, us, not taught us a way of life? Has he not taught us what we need to do? The sunnah, you see so many sunnahs nowadays, we are all breaking, me included, the whole jamaat, together we break so many sunnahs. One of the sunnahs that is so beloved in the eyes of, in the eyes of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that was from every single prophet had this sunnah. The sunnah of the beard, every single prophet had this sunnah. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in a hadith, lengthen your beards and trim your mustaches. Lengthen your beards and trim your moustaches. And Hazrat Shaykh, Hazrat Mawlana Muhammad Zakariya, Sab, Muhajira Madani, Nawar Allahu Marqadahu, writes that every sin we commit, if we listen to music, the sin, the sin starts from when we listen to when we end. When we take the headphones out of our ears, the sin ends there. If we watch something, the sin would start when we start watching, it will end when we stop watching. But he said the sin of the beard is such a sin that from the day we start cutting our beards that sin will stay with us every single second of every single day that sin will be in our accounts. On the day of Qiyamah when we be there in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in front of the scale that never lies Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have this every single sin for every single second written down. We'll, we will perform our hajj. Our hajj it says in a hadith Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says the person should come back ummu, like the day his mother gave birth to him. Meaning he should come back in such a state where his slate should be clean, he should have not one guna in his account. And yet during this Hajj, we are there, you're there in Makkatul Mukarrama, you're trimming your you're, you're shaving your beard in Makkatul Mukarrama. You're in Medina Munawwara. We go to Medina to do ziyarat of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There in Medina Munawwara, we are breaking, we have the audacity to break. The Sunnah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another story comes to mind of two Persians. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent a letter to the Kisra of Persia. And it says in the hadith, فَمَزَّقَهُ The Kisra of Persia tore this letter apart. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did a badwa on him. That may Allah tore apart your empire as you have torn apart my piece of paper. And the Kisra of Persia sent two people to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw them, they had no beard. He looked at them, he says, Man amarakuma bihada. Who has given you to the command to do this? Who has given you the command to do this? To shave your beard, who has given you this command? 
And he turned his face away from them. Let it not be on the day when we need our, when, he, when we need Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when we need the intercession of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that he turns his face away from us, like he turned his face away from the kuffar. Let him, let it not be that he sees as the people who are supposed to be following his sunnah, they go against his sunnah. Let it not be that he turns his face away from us on the, on the day of qiyamah, and he says, "I will not do your sifaj today." What are we going to do then on the day of qiyamah? On the day of Qiyamah, he will have so much raham. Every single Nabi will go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, hands raised. Ya Rabbi Nafsi, oh my Lord, only me, I'm only asking for myself. Hazrat Isa alayhi salam will not ask for his mother that, oh Allah, you saved Maryam as well. He will just say, Ya Rabbi Nafsi, oh my Lord, just save myself. Just save myself. Just give me dakhla into Jannah. My Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will, will fall in sajda. Allah ta'ala will say, Irfa' ra'sak, irfa' ra'sak. Raise your head, O oh Nabi, raise your head, O oh Nabi. And then he will say to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, cry to Allah, Ya Allah, I'm not asking for myself. Ya Rabbi Ummati, Ya Rabbi Ummati. Ya Allah, I'm asking for my Ummat, my whole Ummat. Not one person should be left behind for my Ummat. He said, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Ummatis will be in Jahannam. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will take them out one by one. He will continue taking them out until only the Kuffar are left behind in Jahannam. Now brothers, this is the, this is the Prophet. Whom, whose sunnah we have chosen to break, whose sunnah we have chosen to go against. This is a prophet who we, whose, whose need we are in. Nabi Allah Ta'ala, he says in the Quran that if you, if you want Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala to love you, then you have to follow me. If we're going against the sunnah of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, if we're going against the sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how do you expect Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala to love me? So inshallah from today, brothers, we have to make a strong need to bring in the sword of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa to show the true love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in our lives. We, everybody says we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa but we do nothing in our practical lives to show this. We have lost our identity as Muslims. We are ashamed if people see us with a beard, people see us with a jibba, and we are ashamed. May Allah give us a tawfiq to act upon what has been said. Ameen, ya Rasulullah. Allah Allah.